Okay guys, we are back. Today we are going to look at the Fuji X-H2S uh, ISO performance for wildlife. So let's screen share and let's jump right into this. We're going to try to keep this relatively short. And I was going through some files and I wanted to start with a baseline. So um, for starters, we're using on one photo raw. This is an old shot from my R5. Um, and we are, this is a JPEG, but it gives us an idea still. Um, I couldn't find any RAWs quickly on this hard drive, but this gives us an idea at ISO 6400. And probably a bit of motion blur in the bird. It's a little far, but shot looks pretty good if you don't crop in. This was a shot at 560 millimeters, so the Fuji, had I been shooting the same subject, Fuji would have a pretty big advantage in terms of reach. Um, but that's your idea for noise, so it's pretty good. It's definitely better than the Fuji. I mean, much more expensive camera with a full frame sensor, so should be, but that's what we're here to look for. So this is a Fuji shot at 6400, and then I'm just gonna dig in on some more. So let's make sure my computer is fully loaded the shot. So the Fuji, a lot of people say this, the Fuji noise pattern is more film grainy. Um, people argue it's maybe a more pleasing noise, which I would probably agree with. I. I'm still, my eye is still at a preference where I want to get rid of noise, so I would still probably be removing it. Uh, but if we were to look at those side by side, there we are. So zoom in, you can still see at 6400 on the R5, there is noise. At 6400 on the X-H2S, there is more noise. Is it a stop? I don't know, they both clean up pretty well. So there is some difference. I mean, I you know, if you told me the Fuji, had uh, twice the native reach uh, versus I didn't have the one to 500 at the time I shot that. But if you were gonna tell me the, the Fuji shooting at 900 mil and I have twice the reach that I have with, uh, um, eh, with the Canon um, and I don't have to crop the Fuji and I only lose one or so one stop of ISO, I'd say that's pretty good. That's a trade off I'm, I'm willing to take. So let's look through some shots. One thing you're gonna notice, most of these shots are not super high ISO. And I think the reason for that is you don't need them to be because the IBIS is great in the lens, it's great in the body. Uh, I feel comfortable shooting a lot of this stuff slower. And uh, as, you, as you learn to work the camera, I think it gives you some options. So, um, you know, it is what it is. So this was one of the first shots I took. This was, uh, was this on release day? Yeah, this was on the day the camera came out. So I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, we took this at it says I took this at 1026 in the morning, but my pond doesn't actually get any light until afternoon. So this was in the shade. Uh, this is at ISO 3200. And it looks a lot like the Canon if we compare this. Uh, doo -doo -doo. If we compare the two, I would say the noise. Yeah, to me that looks like about one stop. The noise at 6400 on the Canon is probably about one stop better than the Fuji, give or take. But pretty good. Uh, I just picked this at random. Some of these are sharper. I haven't touched. This is the, the raw, uh, or not raw. This is also the JPEG, so a good comparison to the Canon. Um, On one still doesn't support Fuji raw from the new camera, so I've been converting to DNG files recently, but when I first got it, I just shot JPEG. Um, but I don't have any noise reduction turned on in camera, so I, I had it turned off. So pretty good. I'm happy with that. Uh, you're going to get your details being close to the bird. So that was 3,200, this is 4,000, same bird. No issues with the noise. And just for argument's sake, show you how that cleans up. So we're using no noise built right into on one. Uh, now, usually if it's a JPEG, I turn down the enhanced detail slider because the JPEG already has a bit of sharpening. Let's just leave it right there. I don't want it to like be all gross, uh, but that's pretty good. You can see the noise is gone at that point. So it's totally clean. Details look pretty good. You could play with that with the sliders as you want, with micro contrast or other sharpening tools, but looks good to me. That's clean. Uh, here's a high ISO shot. So this was shot at 5.30 in the morning. Well, you can see the sun was starting to hit the horizon and look okay. Um, but that's pretty noisy. This is a shot that I would, I would be tempted maybe not to treat. Um, this might be... I mean, and there's nothing happening in the shot in terms of, uh, of of like detail and contrast and stuff like that. So this is a shot where I don't know if I would actually 
do anything with it but it does clean up the noise pretty well when you treat that there so that's what 12 8 looks like assuming there's there's no uh that's what 12 8 looks like assuming there's no processing and again it depends like if you're cropping in for detail here i don't have detail i have a silhouette of a bird i knew i was going to shoot it like my only crop here would be to level the horizon um but it depends i, I don't hate the noise here I, it's just like a moody picture about the light but if you wanted to take it out you could uh this is an interesting one this is at 6400 uh i don't know why i think i was trying to shoot i was trying to shoot songbirds in the bush and i guess i just had it high and saw the bird fly by um you can see here when you from here i like it from here i like the colors and, and the pose and everything looks sharp if you zoom in you're looking for feather detail at 6400 with with weird lighting um not a lot of contra and you're not a lot of feather detail in in here anyway not from that distance so so it depends what you want i think 6400 that looks fine i mean i can't even see the noise um uh, really in the in there i mean not enough to bother me uh the next three shots are interesting so these were you know probably right out oh no these are a few minutes later but these so 6400 1250 because the warbler was bouncing around i easily could have shot that at 250 had i known he was going to be stationary and if i was aiming for that but you can see we have bad image quality very soft even even zoomed out very soft again and then this last one we've lost the pose but this is where we started and this is where all of a sudden you're getting like nice feather detail at 6400 let's clean this up and see what happens and that's pretty good i'm happy with that there's there's a nice detail here you could do more again um, and this could have been shot better and exposed better but the, the noise has basically been removed the image is clean detail is good bird sharpness is good so i mean there's nothing wrong with that looks good to me but you can see your technique really matters because here i must have like wobbled a little or he moved and like same settings back to back uh you know one second apart and one photo looks really nice the other looks like garbage this is uh 4, so when we zoom in here you can see some noise again i mean i'm trying not to zoom that's why you buy a lens and a kit that crops and shoots at 900 mil because i don't want to be cropping in too hard in post uh, there's not the bird's not big enough there's not going to be detail anyway but i think like this photo looks perfectly fine at 4000 and, and you could easily denoise that these are interesting these are 6400 this phoebe i'm not sure which one i want to well let's just do both so 6400 again let's treat it and what do we get pretty good so you can see i mean that's removed all the noise and done a really good job it's removed a little bit of detail if you crank that that helps bring it back i would probably try a little bit more of that with with the actual sharpening tab with the effects but again like that's a heavy crop right that's the size of the bird if you want that detail you've got to really shoot the if if you want to get detail when you're doing this shoot the bird here like wait for it and get close to shoot it at this level if you're here trying to crop to here you're never going to have that much detail anyway so uh same thing let's let's try here and see what happens pretty good looks pretty good uh what do we got here so this is a we're gonna do what this little series and then we'll call it so we've got a warbler i think this is a chestnut sided warbler chestnut breast i don't know they're all the same warblers and shorebirds no difference they all look the same some of them are like yellow and some of them are black and they all look the same this time of year um he's in the shadows far I mean that's as much as you're gonna get there's not much going on there even at 1600 so that's my point like if you go back to this other warbler at 6400 there's way more detail and the noise is way less of a problem than here now interesting once he gets out in the light now you can see we have very little noise and good detail and when we sharpen that up now the noise is completely removed and the detail really pops so even though he's not that close if your exposure is good and there's some contrast on the bird 
um, and brighter color bird might make it a bit easier. That's where you start to get detail. So detail doesn't just come from one thing. It doesn't just come from one sensor. Um, you know, there's factors that go into it. Um, same, this last one is a, is a good idea, I think, to compare. So had there been light hitting his head, if you look here, there's a lot more detail here where the light's hitting his head versus here. These are still all at 1600. And here there's no light on his head at all. And there's some motion blurs. So you're just, you're gonna lose your image at that point. But overall, yeah, I would say I often find myself shooting uh, maybe, I don't know, two to 4,000. Let's take a quick, quick look here. Where have I been shooting the Fuji? So if we get rid of that and we go, let's go change that back. Let's see. Uh, where do we get into these Fuji files? Where's my DNGs? Bear with me. Eventually we'll find them. There we go. Okay. So now we're into the Fuji stuff. So a lot of 1600s, a thousand. So shorebirds in the morning were a thousand. Stuff at the pond, I was, you know, between a thousand and 1600. Middle of the day was shooting at 160 and then cranking the shutter to drop. Uh, bird on a tree, 2500 in the shadows too uh, ta -ta -ta. yeah some loons early in the day before the light was up 6400 but i haven't done much at 12 8 let's look uh, what do we have okay let's look a couple more these blue jays i forgot about these shots so so you can see when this first loads let's look at another one it takes a second for my computer to load uh the file here so once it actually cleans up, so you can see it just shifted there. So there's there's our noise. I, you know, that's what it actually looks like. Um, this one, have I edited this? I'm not positive. Let's just take a look. I don't think I have. So let's hit this with no noise. Mm, that might be doing some weird artifacts on his face. So let's dial her down a little. It's a pretty big crop too, though. So that looks pretty good to me. I mean, again, you could you could dial that out if you want. Let's even kill that all together, and you could paint in sharpness. I have a friend who uses on one. That's what he does. He just paints his own, his own sharpness. So that must be where we got but again i mean i wouldn't want to crop it 12800 in in low light this was uh basically in total dark but the noise is gone so deal with the sharpness and the detail that's up to you and where you are and, and how the bird worked but um uh, from a noise perspective i i see no issue with that at all so is there anything else that's worth uh what this is eight thousand so here's a sparrow on a sparrow on a wire at eight thousand I still don't really have an issue with that. Like that that photo, if I'm not cropping, is is more than usable. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think that's probably that's probably gonna do it for what I wanted to display today. Um, it's up to you. You've you've seen the results, and I showed you the Canon earlier on. This is a, I think I've processed this to remove the noise, but that's at 4,000, we're still very sharp. So, I mean, the detail and, and the noise is, is great there. Um, I did see, let's just see if I can find those Canon. Those are Olympus, where's the CR, CRAWs? I don't know if I have many on this hard drive. Um, Shot that fox pretty low. Oh, here we go. So, okay, here we go. Here's 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 a few more Canon. These are some Canon RAWs. So again, once it once it loads, so there's definitely less noise with the Canon. I would say the Canon 
6,400 on the Canon looks like 3,200 on the Fuji. So I think there's about a stop difference is what my eye is telling me. But this is different. There's a bigger bird. Nice, even light. He was in, in shadow, but it was, it was, he wasn't back in the dark. He was right on the edge. Um, something in the foreground, it looks like here that I shot through, but when I look at hundred percent, this is, this was with the one to 400 5.6. So the same F eight, but 300 millimeters shorter. So you got to think the Fuji would have been right away. It would have probably been something like, like that, right? You're probably talking like 30% more. So now you're framing it like this, as opposed to to that that's a pretty big difference so overall i you know you've got the results there's there's a couple shots from the r5 at 6400 to compare and the fuji um if if your prime goal is uh is noise then full frame is going to be better for sure but it's not going to be game changingly better this is 10,000 on the r5 and you can see like that's that's pretty messy i would say the r5 is holding up better at 10,000 than the fuji for sure but as you've seen in my catalog, I, I don't have a lot of times when I've shot at um, 10,000. And I, th I think you can, you know, just find ways not to do that. So I didn't really script this out. I just wanted to kind of go through this together and, and show you guys how things look. But yeah, that's what I got. So now you can see a test side by side and decide what makes more sense for you but remember when you're looking at this that cropping makes a huge difference so you can't compare noise on the canon at 500 millimeters uh with the new lens at 7.1 you can't compare that to um the fuji at 900 millimeters um and like i mean there's a, a total difference you have to compare equivalent focal length so if you're going to have to crop in hard on the full frame then that one stop you're gaining you're probably going to lose so hope this is helpful